This is Tesla's new wireless charger. And no, it's not for your car, but it's for your desk or your nightstand or wherever you might wanna place uh, this guy in your home or your office. And what separates this charger from other Qi wireless chargers is that it, uh, it basically mimics one of the main selling points that Apple was trying to achieve with air power. Now, if you remember when Apple introduced air power, the appeal was that you could drop your device anywhere on the pad and it would charge no problem. You don't have to adjust and find the perfect coil, it would just work. You can do this with an iPhone, AirPods, and even Apple Watch. Unfortunately, Apple was unable to figure out the overheating issues in time and ultimately decided to scrap the product. Although apparently it might come back, but as of right now, it has been scrapped. But a company called Free Power basically figured out how to do this and then allowed other manufacturers to implement that technology. And so now it's officially out in this new Tesla wireless charger. And so out of the box, you do get this charger. Um, and when you do pick it up, you'll notice it's actually incredibly heavy. It's very premium. Uh, it's made up of premium metal material here. There's Alcantara on the top, uh, which is kind of what lines uh, the inside of Tesla's. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, it kind of reminds me of the Tesla charging pad, but a little bit nicer than what you get inside of the actual car. There are some subtle Tesla branding on the front. There's an LED light to let you know that you're charging a device. And then there's this thing that's just kind of the worst part about this. This is the integrated USB-C cable. Not a huge fan of this. Integrated cables are not great. We should never do this, especially if there's not a known warranty or something for this specific cable. And now I'm unsure what happens if this thing dies. Uh, I'm sure there's some sort of manufacturer warranty. I just don't know how long it goes for. Uh, but this thing is $300. And so if this does not work anymore, then this won't work anymore and you're kind of out $300. Also inside of the box, you get this Tesla branded and very Cybertruck reminiscent 65 watt wall adapter. Um, and so that's what you would use to plug in the integrated cable that I do not like. And uh, yeah, this is all that you need. You plug it in. Um, and there's also uh, two ways that you can actually have this charger propped on your desk or table. So you just put it down flat, which is nice, but also inside of the box, you get this little magnetic stand here. And so this would allow you to give it a little bit of a prop up and angle towards you so that you can see what your phone is displaying and whatever information you're always on display, whatever, if it's on your desk, you kind of get it propped up and angled towards you. So that's kind of nice. You have that option and it's magnetic. So it comes off pretty easily. Now the charger will charge any Qi enabled device at 15 watts, though any is put in quotes because you can expect iPhones to be limited to that magic seven and a half watts that we know and love. Since it's not a MagSafe charger, it's not going to be at the full 15 watts. In theory, you are able to charge three devices at a time, but that is going to depend on the devices and the size of those devices. So three large iPhones, probably not going to happen. Two phones and a pair of AirPods or other earbuds, yeah, I think we can make that work. Although it does kind of depend on the placement at times. I do wish that we could get our Apple Watch charged on this thing. That is one of the other main benefits of what the AirPower was going to offer was that it could work with an Apple Watch, AirPods, and your phone, but this is going to be mostly two phones and some AirPods or other earbuds, uh, and that's fine, but just wanted to point that out. Finally, as far as the charging experience goes and the whole free power thing, I mean, it does work pretty well for the most part. You can pretty much drop your device anywhere on here and it should charge and there should be uh, a coil somewhere on here because it's lined throughout that it can catch and charge no matter where you place your phone or say something like your AirPods. Um, it will continue to charge even when you move it around. So it really does offer that peace of mind knowing that like if you placed it down here at night and you were exhausted and you weren't paying attention that it wasn't going to not charge because it wasn't perfectly set on a coil. Like you don't have to worry about that. It's going to charge no matter where you put any of this, which is nice. And this happened to me a lot with uh, non MagSafe wireless chargers. And even with MagSafe at times, if you don't catch it right, and you don't realize it, it's not going to charge. And, and you know, MagSafe certainly helps that. But I, I mean, this is kind of the perfect experience in terms of like being able to place it and it doesn't totally matter. Although I will say sometimes placement does matter. Um, for example, if you have two phones on here, your best bet is to do a phone uh, on one side and then the AirPods or earbuds in the middle because I feel like the outer rim of the charger doesn't really work well or have enough coil 
power or juice to kind of like get the AirPods to work. And so I noticed that it's kind of got to be away from the edge, but the phones work just fine. And so that was kind of my solution. And it could just be me. I haven't had this for a very long time. And so I haven't been able to fully test this out. This is kind of like a first impressions thing, but so far it's been working pretty well. Now, for those wondering how it works with the case, works totally fine. As far as I can tell, I've tried a couple of different ones. I mostly use Apple specific leather cases. And so those have worked totally fine. I'm not really sure if it gets really hot or not. I mean, it's gotten warm when you've had three devices charging at the same time, but it hasn't been like something that I'm worried about catching fire, at least not right now. Temperature seems to be relatively normal. Now, should you buy this $300 charger? No, probably not, unless you love the look, which I kind of do. Um, you have $300 to blow, which I kind of don't, and you're a big fan of Tesla, which eh, I'm kind of on the fence about. Maybe you're a big fan of freedom too, which is the freedom to place your device wherever you want, kind of, for the most part, on this charging pad. But otherwise, I think a MagSafe charger for like half the price, Nomad makes a couple of great, like three multi-device chargers out there, uh, or three-in-one, Belkin, to name a few, those are all really good, and they're half the price, maybe $200 tops, which I still think is kind of a lot of money, but you know that's kind of where a lot of those premium luxury multiple device chargers are at. This one is $100 more than those, and I still think that's a little ridiculous, but there's definitely a market for somebody out there. Would love to know if that's you down in those comments. This has been Down with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.